Hi YouTube and, and Facebook. Um, I'm making this video for a few reasons. Um, the why I mention in Facebook is Hi Anne Marie Knight Mackenzie, I think is your whole name. Um, there is a few months ago that you pointed out to me that my daughter-in-law had a candle that you thought was associated or affiliated with witchcraft. And I got angry with you. Um, um, undeniably, I treated you like shit. And I'm sorry, would you accept my apology? Now, whether or not th this is true, I don't know. All I know, things happened. Okay, here's a, here's a for instance, but some really weird things are happening. But this, this is the kind of person I ended up dealing with when I went out there. I told her I don't eat till a little bit later because, you know, we're, we're uh, our um, difference in, in, well, no, well, actually the reason, the main reason is because I really don't eat it until late at night. But I asked her if she would save me a uh, brat to eat. And um, her boyfriend came in, you know, in front of her husband. And they used to have, you know, they're all close or whatever, weirdos. You know, if you're watching us, you're weird. Whatever. You know, if y'all can get along, you know, that's one thing. But the way you're treating me, you're weird. So um, a daughter-in-law would have set that inside. But what does she do? She gives two of them to her boyfriend. Everybody else ate. And by the time I, I walked back in there, I thought, well, I better eat something. And, you know, clean up the mess all at one time or something. And they were gone. You know, and that happened like a few times when I was there. And I was really thankful that I had uh, fasted before I went out there and on the way out there. And decided to fast even the first day I was there so um but for several weeks before that I had went like um two and three days with a week in in between or whatever you know and get myself prepared for any hardships that I might encounter and <laughs> that was just one of the little things that happened but that was kind of enough because I I looked right at her and asked her and, you know, like you just heard me here, if I came to your house and said, and you're a stranger, would you save me a brat? You'd save me one. I'd save you one. You know what I'm saying. So, and she would have gave her boyfriend one or none and said, my mother-in-law is here as a guest. So, you know, just little things like that. So you quite possibly are right. And um, my daughter-in-law, if you're watching this, which you probably could care one way less, you know, or another, because you could easily cut me off with um, Doug talking to Luke saying, ding dong, the witch is dead, and taking it as a death threat, you know, which is uh, simply uh, set back in your thinking. So anyway, if you're watching this, you and I both know what you did. And if you're going to use what Doug said as an excuse and tell me I will never see my son again, and I'm sure that includes my granddaughters too, well, good on you, woman. Whatever. You take that to your grave, what you did to me, because you know what it was. I didn't say anything out of line in your home, and I was forbidden to talk about Jesus Christ when you started talking, spewing your Mormon crap that y'all gonna live together like one big orgy. Take your crap and shove it. The old days of Abraham having so many wives was the Old Testament dear, you know. So anyway, Anne, I am really sorry because there's many days after that. In fact, right up until recently, it was about a couple weeks ago here and you kept trying, kept trying and and I thought to myself, either this woman has a really big heart and she actually does love me or she's faking it pretty good. And I chose, I think you love me and I love you too. You stuck with me even, even when you knew I was being me. You did know that. And um, like I said, whether or not this is true and you pointed it out, um, 
And I think in, in, I'm not going to make excuses for my behavior. I'll just leave it there. I am sorry. So, <clears throat> okay. I hope you forgive me. I think you already did beforehand because you obviously are still my friend on there. So you're very strong and I appreciate that in a big way. So, um, happy 4th of July to everybody. Now I'm going to tell you a story about 21 years ago today. Well, going on 22 years. 21 years ago today, I was married just about this time of day, too. Um, it's about 4 o'clock Minnesota time. Um, Central time, U.S., uh, the first day I ever met my birth mother, she came to be at my wedding, which she called our wedding because she had never uh, been to any of her children's weddings before. And now that I know her, it is no big surprise why she wasn't there. But on that night, um, there was witchcraft going on around my home, and it was clearly evident. Um, this is what happened. We all had, oh, we had champagne. Uh, our boss, we both worked at the same place, Doug and I, at that time, um, before we opened up our own shop. Well, we did little things. Um, we used to restore cars and whatever, but and we did little things in our shop, but we both worked at a, a place called Perry's Auto Salon together and um, I was detailing and he was doing like just body work and everything and detailing and they yeah he did some painting but and metal fab and whatever so but yeah with the witchcraft going on in my well oh my my almost my whole wedding was just a total disaster it was 104 degrees hot like it is today and if any noise comes on or is on, that's my air conditioner, it is really hot out. And I have my dishwasher going so the pump might come on. But please ignore the noise and just hear me out. So um, we didn't even sleep in the same bed that night. Uh, he walked around the house all night long and he was uneasy. And in an argument, it was like, oh, maybe a couple months later than that or something. He's like, we didn't even consummate our marriage. And I'm, uh, I'm just fucking like, ooh. Because, okay, um, I've been with Doug for 31 years. Um, I literally still have my own room. But for 10 years, almost 10 years, we were engaged. I had my own room. We, were, we decided to raise our children um and not make a family together and see how it was gonna go um not even sleeping in the same bed just being friends living in the same house i literally um would do work around here and paid the utilities and the phone bill and whatever and fed him for a place to live and did the yard work and my kids and i and um I mean, he did, he worked too, and, you know, so, okay, that part of the story's out of the way. So, with all the witchcraft that has been around in my life and what I was raised by, the chances for Doug and I even to make it with uh, family involvement and people that called themselves our friends was really slim, if not even probably. Their chances were that we would not be together this long. So um, about 10 years ago now, I gave him a letter of divorcement. And all he has to do is sign it and take it and go get a divorce anytime he wants to do that. I made him my estranged husband in my house. Well, you know, when you got like a... Uh, uh, I, I really can't explain the intervention of, of demonic spirits coming towards us, but even with all that, we're still closer than most friends. Um, when you say frenemy, 
Doug and I have brought that to a whole new term, you know. Um, so I just wanted to fill everybody in on what's going on in my life. So today I decided, well, actually last night I decided to give it one more chance. Now, every anniversary I'm thinking I'm going to give it one more chance and see if he's going to step up to the plate for God and what I believe in and actually be united with me as one. Now, this is why I decided to get married on Independence Day because when I was 17 and I legally got emancipated from my parents by the state of Minnesota as a legal adult with a job and a place to live, and I was considered an adult at that age um, and totally independent. I've been so independent of everybody all my life, but I figured when people get married, they should be as one and be independent of the world. And that was kind of the theme that we were going on even for our wedding and the pastor that married us, a Lutheran pastor, um, he totally botched that. I mean, even the scriptures he picked, I mean, we kind of just let it go and let it slide, or at least I did, and I probably shouldn't have, because he twisted the meaning of what I wanted to do and be in our marriage to what he determined was up and what was up and whatever. And, um, even the death tell us part stuff, neither one of us really agree on all that either, you know. So, I mean, it's just it is different things, whatever, you know. So, but today we are going to celebrate our anniversary. And um, I feel like, I feel like evil isn't as powerful as it has been almost i'm really emotional today <sighs> excuse me i'm a flipping wreck did you notice <laughs> no probably not for a second till a second ago right yeah i mean kind of an emotional mess <laughs> you know not not um not knowing which way to go or lost or no i've never been lost like that but um maybe lost without my other half so uh oh yeah so today's really emotional it's been a nice day though um doug and i have been sharing some music and uh on facebook with our friends and stuff and doug made a joint a uh, joint <laughs> yeah oh sure maybe <laughs> no, he doesn't. Well, once in a while, he'll smoke something, but he likes his beer. But anyway, I don't know. Oh, he made a group, <laughs> a private group called uh, Patriots Unite. Now, I don't consider myself a patriot. Um, like I said, I got married on Independence Day for being independent of the world as one entity becoming too united like our minds and hearts and souls um, go together with our spouse if things are working and fitting right. When God's involved in both lives, you'll make it. If he's not, you you'll never make it. Never make it without God in this world in a relationship. Mark my words. That's the only thing that's even kept us together as friends. So, so anyway, he's got this group. And I shared a post that said uh, something about, like, I am the most extreme, extremist. I, I'm a free radical. I'm like a virus in your bloodstream. I'm something, one little speck that's in there running around that you can't get rid of. That's how independent I am. And uh, that's just my personality. So now I wrote something on top of it. And it said, you know, like, uh, um, well, anyway, explaining why 
I am so um, radical and that people that are coming against God's children, we're doing his work, we're not backing down. And I said, if I saw a baby getting jabbed with the sauce or an old person or something, You'd play hell getting out of my house. If you were, like, if you did that in front of me, I'd slap that needle out of your hand, and I'd knock you to the floor, and I'd step on your throat. And I am not playing. I am really serious. When when these people just so, so say, this is not going to affect you, and this won't alter you at all, but I can honestly say that the CDC hid my records after they gave me the swine flu. I almost died. I still carry fevers and um, muscle contractions and tremors and heart problems to this day. Right now, they sampled out of my skin um, the virus they had put in me. Three different plugs, one out of my head, one out of my thigh and another one down by my knee. They literally took a tool like this and part of it like that and took a plug out of my flesh and sewed me back up and sent it to the CDC. After that, they, they sent me to a CDC branch that's up in Duluth, Minnesota, and they checked me for all these different diseases. In the meantime, I had print, printed out um, my medical records from the CDC and uh, even the Mayo, Mayo Clinic, these people all know who I am. They've been tracking my blood for a long time. So, so they, they hid my records. They tried to hide my records, but I printed them out with hard, hard copies and sent them to other places so people have copies of what they actually did to me that they tried to hide and then said that there was basically nothing wrong with me but I'm not allowed to get another flu shot least I die because I almost died already because what they did to me before it's like yeah and then they go and hide my records so um so I'm on there and I'm telling people basically the short story of um how I have fevers and nerve damage and everything. And um, so, so much for the CDC. And if people trust them and you really do trust the health organization above, and I, I studied Morgellons. I know exactly what it is. I can tell you how many germs are in this bug. There's nine of them. And they have a, a protein carrier from human baby fetal cells. And their gestation periods are different for each bug that's in it. Like one will hatch every 29 days, one has uh, 30 days, another one has like 33 days. And as a combination, they work like one, one works to create a shell around the whole germ of the situation and I, I studied this I mean I can literally talk on a level to Dr. Fauci that Fauci in microbiology would not really truly understand he would only be able to puppet and mimic what other people have said I've been studying these diseases all my life and I didn't have to go to college to learn but I did start in medical school when I was 17 so um and went up to one and a half year LPN um and then specialized in physical therapy aid so anyway I know I'm just as smart as them in that respect and just because somebody has a degree really doesn't mean that God doesn't work in other ways through people on this planet you know I have a microscope too buddy you know and yeah well whatever so so much for what happened to me but I really am when I'm warning people and I'm asking you please to reconsider if you consider putting this crap in your body just do not do it don't do it God will keep you safe from anything any disease see I worked on a ranch and when I was 17 and I took that um, swine flu shot, um, I might have been 18. Well, somewhere in that year. 
in 76. So um, I was born in 58. Do the math. Thank you. <laughs> so anyway, uh, we were encouraged to take that shot because we were working around farm animals and that type of thing. And um, I trusted them at that time. You know, I, I really didn't have a reason to not trust the government at that time. I mean, oh, well, I had reasons because I was like protesting their wars at 12 years old and whatnot. But medically, I did not think that doctors would be involved in harming other people or so absentmindedly putting some kind of serum in you that could never be tested if you, you tried 100 years. You couldn't test what it's going to do to a human being 200 years down the line. Could never prove it. But the Satanists, no. They've been doing these experiments on people for a very, very long time. Thousands of years, literally. You know, and the true fall of mankind is... Um, Satan raping man fell. If you want to read the Bible, read it right. And then don't intervene all the rest of the crap. Just leave it at that. If you could try that with your heart one time, you're, you're going to get to the truth. If you want to really know who God is and that God actually had a wife and she was raped by Satan and that's why everybody's on this planet, there, there you are with your facts right there. And um, I can't substantiate this at the point. Well, I, I've sent through a stork te text, which just means hidden. And, and there's so many texts all around the world that believe just what I just told you. Um, that they'll, they'll call her like, Persemony, or or there's another one with the M where she was turned into a fish because she was mad at her father, or whatever. And um, but that's not what it is. That's not at all what it is. So the coming together is truly getting the demons off this planet. There is a place for them. They have had their chance. These people that still. It's not let them that be evil, be evil still. That's a, that's a long time ago. They had their chance. Their time is up. No, no, not let them be evil. Oh, no, I am not letting you be evil and evil still. I'm coming right back up your ass with some evil shit of my own. It's called get in my face, hurt my babies, and I'm going to fuck you up. There. How you like that? There's no more of this passive shit on this planet out of me, not out of my mind. I am physically not going to touch a person unless you touch me first. But I'd touch one of my kids or somebody I love or use if I see somebody being hurt or something. You know, I can't I have no guarantees in that area. None. So, no, I, I'm not going to. I love God. If, if you think that it makes me love God less because I slapped somebody's head off for walking out of line, your time's up with your filthy crap. Not you, but them. Their, their time is up. It's over. So don't feel shy. If you have anger and it's righteous anger towards somebody, you know, and if you're wrong, do it like I did. I'm sorry. If I am wrong. I wish to God I was wrong, but from the evidence of how I was treated, um, this woman that pointed that out, in the most innocent way, I should say, because she looks so much like my daughter-in-law. I shared each one of their pictures and showed them to each other. And, um, but this comes to the fact of, the true beauty shines through from the heart, so <laughs> you got one real ugly thing and the other one not so much. So, and yeah, once again, you know, I hope I'm wrong. Um, 
all I can do is pray for everybody, and I do, and I really do. Oh, also, if you're still watching this, Anne-Marie, I love your name, and congratulations on your new relationship. I hope you both really will be happy, and I wish you not the best of luck. I wish you long life of love and happiness. Luck just means you're hoping. I'm, I'm not hoping it into existence. I'm asking God, I already did a long time ago, to find you somebody to spend your life with because you seem so lonely. And um, that's even I did when I was still mad at you. I asked him to help you because I like you a lot. So um, that's kind of what's going on in my world today. I'm a little bit up in the air, like I said, with my emotions, and um, oh, there's a whole lot more to a lot of what that that my um, even my marriage story is because uh, uh, in the ether I've known Doug all my life, and even before that in past lives, but I can't prove that either. But um, can we say candlesticks and witnesses? We've been around for a while. So really wish us the best because the best thing people could do is hope that we make it together because if one couple makes it, evil's going to end on this world. And and one, <laughs> one true Godhead coming together. And if more, more men and women can do that through marriage, evil is going to be shattered. And we have to bring the families back onto this planet. Enough with this hokey um, circus, this this zoo of a circus that they forced us all to live in. You know, it's pretty grody, don't you think? I do. I think it's horrible. I don't want my grandchildren seeing these weirdos like like I seen um, a, a little boy dressed up like a girl on a tricycle in. Uh, pink little girl dresses type thing um, on kind of like a somewhat of a porn site that um, somebody that I care about, not in my home, but um, a family member out of my home was looking at some years back. And I mean, all the weird shit that's out there. And it's like, why? Why? You know, why? Do you want a little boy to dress up like a little girl and then hurt her? Why do you want to take hormones and compete in my sport? You know, why? Why? Does it make you feel better if you can take hormones and beat me up? Does that, does that make you feel like a better woman? You're sure a lower man. You're way less of a man. And if you think you're still a man, or if you think you are a woman, then you put yourself in the nothing category. That's what you are. That's your choice. Let's not let them be evil still. No, I'm not letting you. God's not letting you. Satan's not even letting you. Free will, that's over too. Mark my words. You think you people are going to do anything you want on this planet? And hurt everybody else. And yes, you're grotesque. I cannot stand looking at a man dressed up like a woman and pretend this is funny or this is real or I got to look at you're disgusting. Why should I? No, that bad vibe that's brought into my life by even seeing that. I shouldn't have to look at something like that. I'm, I'm 64 years. You know, why? It doesn't matter, I guess, if I was four. Or 84. A human being's vibe shouldn't have to be lowered by something that does not want to be human. Stop pretending these things are human. They're demons. They were kicked out. That's why. And I'm not going to pretend. Free will, that was what... God gave Adam and Eve free will, and that story's misconstrued too. Ladies, I'm here to tell you, you and Eve and no other woman except for what God, what, excuse me, that I, whew, 
Satan created a soulmate when he got here. That was his whole goal, to bring God into existence, to try and control God after he got kicked out. Well, the woman that was born was named Lilith. And that thing, which I could call our great, 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 great ancestor, was not the first woman created, but she was the one that brought womankind down under the knees of a man saying, we took the first bite. No, it was still Satan in that female body posing as a female, just like they're doing now. Don't you ever take that on for yourself. You know in your heart, you're a good mom, you're a good woman. You would never, ever, ever in your whole entire soul existence take a bite or feed your husband or somebody you care about something that was going to hurt them if God said, you no, you know, I know. You or I would never do that. We did not do that. Don't take it on for yourself. Satan did that. Satan alone is responsible. So don't take it on. And pretty much that's my message for today. Uh, I'll stick with you for a few more minutes here. Um, yeah, I got some emotional stuff going on today. <laughs> it's heavy. You know, and, and of course, you're going to believe what you want, you know, and I can say, well, I mean, I was uh, raised by a Jesuit and Grandmaster Mason and they tried mind control and oh, whatever. And when that didn't work, they started showing me all the hidden texts and how they twisted everything. What I'm telling you is so true. I, I think you can feel it in your heart, just feel it in your heart. God did not make his humans to fall. The angels, the bad ones, the demons, they fell. Humans didn't fall. We had nothing to fall from. We can only ascend. Christ came to help the demons. I'm helping you fucking idiots. If you're watching me, you demonistic fuckers, you know, get a goddamn grip. Look, you either want to help God succeed with his humankind, or you don't want to be a part of it. But you are not going to keep people enslaved and hurt them and think I'm going to be silent and tell you it's all free will, because no, it is not. Men have free will. You angels and demons do not. You are not free, and you're going to pay got to pay to play. Now I'm going to tell you something. What you pay is going to be a whole lot less if you do it before the judgment day. And there's some of us that have already been raptured. We talked to God. We know it. He knows it. Now you're knowing it. And you knew it anyway because you can feel it. And you know your time's coming short because it, you know, He'll talk to his sleeping people first. Then he's going to directly accost you. And I get it. <laughs> accost. It's going to accost you. <laughs> yeah, I'm laughing at you. I don't like you. I don't love you. And I hate you. I hate what you are. You want to be who you used to be? I'm not going to hate you anymore. Simple as that. And I got another warning for you, too. I see the trying heart in Doug, trying to get closer to God again. If I hear your little brains, because you don't have hearts, 